Hi guys, welcome to the channel. And if you're looking to get a little bit more adventurous with your Land Rover Discovery 2, we are going to be looking at some fantastic parts today that will just instantly give you the edge. So let's get into it. So the aim of the game really is to take a, a Land Rover Discovery, uh, which is pretty much a tenth of the price of a Defender at the moment, and actually make it less road biased and more off-road biased because we're going to be looking at doing some adventures in these discovery ones and twos and they just need a little bit of tweaking because obviously they're an incredibly capable vehicle we all know that and some of the parts on them just need a little bit of tweaking to make them into a massively capable off-roader so we're going to be looking at just like four or five things today that will instantly give you the edge not just for off-road driving but also adventure driving for overlanding so you can get more out of your vehicle you can commute it day to day it's a daily driver and then at the weekend you can throw your gear in it you can throw stuff onto the roof rack and then off you go on an adventure for the whole weekend with a family the first thing i want to mention are these uh, wheel arches now this wheel arch kit is from terra firma and i've always been a massive fan of the terra firma stuff i do think it's well made and well thought out and um, these really are no exception so pretty good value in fact for the whole set now they're really easy to fit uh, there's a couple of tricks that i would recommend to get these on your vehicle easily and efficiently um, but basically they're just bolt on parts so they go straight over your existing bodywork you don't need to cut anything on the vehicle the material is really good it's quite flexible which is nice so you haven't got cheap you know, um, hard plastic that's going to crack as soon as you uh, catch it on a branch or something. They have got quite a lot of flex to them, so they're going to do a really good job of taking those little hits. So you've got two choices. Uh, you can either use the existing fixing screws that come with the pack. Um, they will do the job, but they're, um, they're only black and steel, so they are going to corrode after some time. But if it was me, I wouldn't use these at all. I would use a tech screw. Now, a tech screw is something that's been designed for fitting aluminium or steel sheets onto the roof of factories and warehouses. It's got a drill um, point on the end of it, it's got a flange, and then it's got an 8mm hex head. I'll show you a picture of one now, just to give you an idea. And you can see there, it's also got a steel washer with a rubberized grommet underneath it. Now, these apertures in here probably aren't big enough to hold the rubber grommet um, washer, so you can just remove that, but then you have got that flanged head on the hex bolt and they'll look a lot nice as well because they're sort of that um, galvanized steel they're silver and it makes a feature um, out of them being on the vehicle whereas if you just run these crappy old screws they're going to go rusty and look awful um, out of the box they actually give you this pla this rubber trim now it's a very basic rubber trim it's an off-the-shelf part it's it's super thin and it does the job and it does look nice if it's fitted properly the one thing you're going to have to be conscious of is when you actually flatten this up against the vehicle itself what can happen is this and i'll try and show you this can peel up and um you know it's really hard to get rid of because then you have to undo everything and tuck it pull it back and everything so it's just a natural thing that when this gets tight um it opens up the rubber and it just looks awful so what i'd suggest is obviously get the uh, rubber strip in place and then just deliberately peel it open all along like that and then run some glue inside there push it back on again super glue if you can just a little bit push it back on there and it will stay in place it'll look a lot better and that's definitely important when you're uh, tackling areas like this look where you've got um, a little lift a curve in the profile and this will start to lift again so if you can just glue it down with a bit of super glue um, you're going to get a much nicer finish when it's on the vehicle so that would be my top tip along with fitting it with the tech screws just remember discovery twos now uh quite easily some of them are 20 years old and they are going to have some corrosion now i'm not saying you shouldn't deal with that corrosion properly but if you've got some rusty wheel arches and they're just spoiling the look of your vehicle one really easy way just to refresh that look uh, and really transform the look of the vehicle is just by fitting these spats over the top of the arches because if they've got rust on them it's going to cover them up um, so you've got form and function at the same time so why not go for that that's an, another reason for fitting these now the chances are if you've uh, got yourself a discovery 2 or discovery 1 you're probably making good use of the roof bars and, the, and a roof rack on the vehicle because they're fantastic uh, lugging machines and if you're going on an adventure, if you're going on a little overland trip, bit of a camping trip, you might not be using that space because it's just a pain to get to. But if you have a ladder on the back and you've got yourself a little box up there or something, you know, you'll start to sort of find yourself using that space a lot more. 
So another really good use for one of these ladders, it's not just getting access to your roof uh, rack, but also they're great for hanging stuff off. Now what I mean by that is if you're on a, uh, a green lane or something and you're doing a bit of winching maybe, helping people out, and you've got a lot of dirty gear that you don't want to put in your vehicle, um, why not just get yourself an old rucksack and hang it on the back of this ladder and then you can stuff it with old gloves, uh, snatch shackles, um, soft shackles, um, snatch recovery ropes, um, snatch lines, whatever you want. Just stuff it all in there and you can just hang stuff off this you know carabiner on one of these runs can hold a whole uh, array of stuff and it just means that it's out of the vehicle it's easy to get to when you need it quickly um, and i've even seen spades and things mounted onto these again that makes a lot of sense because you're not drilling holes into your vehicle just a couple of quick fist clamps which are those rubber uh, clamps a quick fist um two of those zip tie them on put your ladder on and then you've just got another um, sort of area to mount stuff to so yeah for like 60 quid plus the tax this is a no-brainer uh, this would definitely be on my vehicle even if I wasn't going green laning or off-roading I'd always have one of these because on camping trips you've got something to hang a guy line onto if you're running a tarp um, if you're running a hammock you've got something to guide onto you can put your rubbish bag on here and as I said before you can put your rucksack in there and all your recovery gear and it's all to hand so yeah ladder is number one on the list so I didn't mention before on those extensions wheel arches how much extra width they give you on the vehicle and it's 50 mil so although the discovery 2 comes with already a very wide profile wheel um, you need to be matching that extra width with some wheel spaces and uh, the wheel spaces are then going to give you an even wider footprint um, they're going to fill those arches nicely and by moving the wheels outside of everything you're going to get an increased turning circle which isn't fantastic on the discovery as standard so make sure you go to the trouble of adjusting all the stops and getting it changed so you do get a full turning circle much more articulation off road so there is definitely a reason for doing what we're talking about here it's not just purely to look uh, really aggressive but these wheel spacers again from LR Parts um, they're available in silver or in black the quality is really nice they're nicely machined considering it's a part that's not really seen because obviously a wheel is going to be covering this um, they've gone to a lot of trouble to make them really nice uh, it's such a shame that you have to cover them up so basically everything's in the kit now you would actually remove your wheel um, as standard and keep the wheel nuts that you've got because these ones on here they will actually sit on your existing studs um, on your hubs and they'll sit in there and then you'll use your previous wheel nut your existing wheel nut on these new studs when you put the wheel over the top that's going to fill those arches really nicely and it's going to give you better articulation and it's just going to give it a really nice aggressive stance now you might find once you've done these uh, and you've done some green laning you've done some off-roading maybe done some pay and play days and you haven't got quite enough ground clearance you can then go to the next stage of doing perhaps a, a slight lift on the vehicle and you've got all the groundwork already done because you've got the extended wheel arches you've got the you know, the, the wider platform that's going to give you a much more capable vehicle off-road so you don't have to do it all at once you can do it in stages and as you learn and progress um, with the driving off-road and uh, on the green lanes you can just change the vehicle as you go along which is which is great so the last two products I'm going to talk about are the same type of product uh, they're a snorkel or raised air intake and uh, if you've got a bit of confusion there on what the difference is check out my other video uh, that I've done recently on uh, defender snorkels because the same uh, science applies uh, here but we've got two snorkels I want to show you and they vary in price quite a bit um, one's almost half the price of the other so you'll be able to make a decision on which one you want to go for uh, this one here is LR Parts own snorkel and the nice thing about it is it's a, it's one piece if you want to use them as a snorkel i.e to try and prevent water ingress into the airbox and enable you to wade more deeply in your vehicle then you need to make sure it's completely sealed up from top to toe so the nice thing about this one is there's no break in the mold unlike the uh, the other one that we've got from terra firma it's a one piece uh, that goes into the wing so you're having to cut uh, an aperture in your wing to allow this to pass through uh, and then both systems will give you you actually get this mounting bracket now this bracket will again go on the inside of your wing and it actually slides there look onto the bracket itself onto the uh, raised air intake you would then use um, copious amounts of tiger seal for instance to make sure that you've sealed that all off from the elements and no water could get in there and then you've got clean cold um, dry air coming all the way from the intake 
all the way through into the airbox. Uh, it can help with performance, it sounds really nice, but it's just going to enable you to do the wading that you want to do when everyone wants to play in some deep water, uh, so why not? So, as far as build quality goes, I mean, the price on this unit itself is only £90 plus the VAT. Now, there's snorkels out there that, I'm not saying they're the same, but they're certainly similarly designed um, for about 300 quid. So for 90 quid, this is an absolute steal. I mean, just this piece alone is probably worth that. I mean, you know, you can't, if you've lost one of these on your vehicle, it's probably cheaper to buy the whole thing uh, than one of these um, from other suppliers. So obviously you get the ram head style on there, which is nice. And again, we talk about the benefits of these in the other video, but just really briefly, you can run them forwards to really ram air into the system, which is great. Or if you're in a convoy and there's loads of dust and you want cleaner air, you can spin them around so that you're just drawing air from behind. It's a nice natural flow. So yeah, I mean, if you're going for a snorkel, if it's something you want, even at that price, I hate to say this, but even as an aesthetic change to your vehicle, just a bolt on bit, it's gonna look super cool for that sort of price. And if you do it properly, it's got a function there too. So um, yeah, a bit of a no brainer really, but let's compare it to the one from Terra Firma. And you can already see it's far more angular. It's more technical looking. Um, and again, it does the same function, but um, it's well made. The, the element you've got here is obviously, I don't know if it's been done for shipping purposes or cost of manufacture, but it comes in two pieces. I guess it is a little bit more manageable, certainly. And just as long as you make sure that this is fully sealed, this section here, uh, when you slot this top section on, uh, that would be the only weak point that I can suggest it's got, because um, if you're wading, you know, there's a very good chance the water's going to be coming over your bonnet, and it will come that high, because you're going to be covering your wing tops. So that section there has to be completely sealed off from the elements. So as long as you've done that, um, you're, you're good to go. But it is something that you've got to be, uh, you know, aware of because otherwise you might just think well I bolt it on and I can uh, I can be a submarine but you can't you've got to do it properly um, so there's no difference in that the actual sort of connection method used by either of these air intakes um, it just really depends on which design you prefer same sort of top um, it's angled differently it's a little bit nicer because you've got this nice grill uh, effect on there which I quite like but you can rotate it uh, as we said on the other one, so if you want clean air in a convoy, or you just want to ram the air in there for um, you know the most efficient way of thrashing a disco, um, this would be a good option. So ultimately, uh, it all comes down to price initially, and this is £150 compared to the, the other one which we looked at, which was £90, and also it's the aesthetics, the design of it. So this is a far more modern design, um, and if that's the look that you've got already on your Discovery, uh, this is pretty much what you're going to go for, I would suggest, because it's going to look really nice uh, addition. If you've got like squared off uh, A bar on there and different bits and pieces that are all squared off, this might be what you want to go for. If you want the more traditional look, the other one's definitely going to fit the bill. But just make sure, whatever you do, if you fit this, make sure that is sealed up. So that neatly brings us to the end of this episode and hopefully you guys who have got your discoveries appreciate the fact that we're trying to definitely get involved in every model of Land Rover, not just a vendor. And there's a lot to be said that the discoveries now are represent such good value for an off-road vehicle compared to a Defender. You know, you can get an awful lot for your money and they are incredibly capable, and especially with a few tweaks. So we're going to be focusing on some more tweaks on Discovery 1 and 2s moving forward. But for now, I'll leave that with you and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.